Greetings from Elite English Academy. Dear friends, welcome to UGTRB English Preparation Series. In this video, let me discuss one topic from Unit 9. So that is Mimetic Theory. So dear friends, if you are an English Literature student with a beard qualification, if you are anticipating so the examination, so just uh, this video will be very very useful. So please uh, watch the video and get benefited. So if you like the video, share among your friends so that they can also be benefited. Now let me enter into the lesson. M. H. Abraham begins his essay titled Orientation to Literary uh, Theories. So there, uh, there is a conversation between uh, Boswell and Johnson. They are talking about uh, Aristotle's book, uh, New Machian uh, Ethics. So here Boswell asks uh, Dr. Johnson, what is poetry? Johnson replies, it is much easier to say what is not. We all know what is light, and but it is not easy to tell what it is. So like that, he says that it is very easy to define what is not poetry. So instead of defining what is poetry, then he says that it is the mark of an educated man to look for precision in each class of things. So there is whatever we do. So it is very important to note the exact things. Precision means uh, the exactness, exact nature, just so far as the nature of the subject admits. So whatever you do, whatever subject uh, you are reading, so you have to look for precision. That means poetry should be very precise. So poetry should be very accurate. So that is the conclusion of Johnson about poetry. Next, M. H. Abraham talks about the four elements of critical theories. How critical theories uh, evolve? So it is a very simple uh, definition he gives. According to him, there are four elements needed for critical theory. The first and foremost thing is work. So that is the creative work. It can be poetry, it can be drama, it can be novel. He says that. So we need the work, creative work. Then if we need creative work, so we need one more person. So the person who creates it, it is the artist. So the writer is the next person. So without writer, the work cannot come. So mostly, mostly the work was focused towards the universe. So this is the third. So because artist writes a work based on universal truth, based on the need of the universe. But uh, slowly, actually he was imitating the world. He was imitating the world. But slowly in the modern time, the shift from the universe it has come to the audience. So this is the end of uh, this essay. Please note down. So what is the base of critical theories? We have four elements. First, we need the work. To write a book, we need an artist. That is the writer. So the writer focuses on the universe. So he tries to imitate or he tries to copy the universe. But now the shift has been from universe to the audience. So that is the people started writing. The people started writing something focusing on the audience. So this is how the entire essay has been discussed and arranged by M. H. Abraham. So this essay focuses on mimetic theory. Actually the essay actually begins now. Mimetic means imitation. So the imitation, this is considered as the most primitive aesthetic theory. So there may be a question, uh, which is considered as the most primitive means ancient aesthetic theory. So art is essentially an imitation of aspects of the universe. So here, uh, this is the thing to be understood. Art, any work of art is nothing but the imitation of the different aspects of universe. So if you have a book, novel, drama, poetry, it is nothing but the imitation of the universe. That is the old theory about 
uh, old theory about uh, mimetics. So mimetic that is imitation. So mimesis first appeared. So the word mimesis first appeared in Plato's dialogues. So this is another fact to be noted. So when was the word uh, mimesis first appeared? Socrates in this concern says something. The arts of painting, poetry, music, dancing and sculpture are all imitation. So all art forms like painting, poetry, music, dancing, sculpture, all are imitations. So if there is a creative art in any form, that is just a, an imitation. So imitation signifies two items. So one is the imitable and the imitation. So according to Socrates, so there are two elements found, imitable and imitation. So what is referred as imitation, the original. So what the imitation, the work, for example, so there is a table. So there is a table, right? So this is the table, imagine, right? Original table, not picture table, original table. So this is imitable, this is imitable. So the picture, so the picture on which uh, a table is uh, found, you know, so that is imitation. So according to Socrates, there are two elements, imitable and imitation. But Plato has a different idea. So he points out three things. One is the eternal and unchanging ideas. There are some ideas that are permanent. But there are some ideas so that can never be changed. Then, so that is the first idea. Second, reflecting this is the world of sense, natural or artificial. So there are basic ideas existing in our mind. So when we think of that idea, so it can be natural or artificial. So third reflects the second. That is, it comprises shadows, images, water, mirrors and fine arts. Now let me tell you, for example, uh, here uh, the same uh, cup. So a cup, right? Imagine it is a cup, tea cup, right? Fine. So here, uh, first the idea of the cup is there, right? Idea of a cup is there. Then, uh, then someone makes that actual cup. Then afterwards, if you paint uh, based on that, so that is the third one. So what he says that there are ideas, ideas come first. So based on the idea, if we create something, so that is the second. Then based on that uh, thing, if we will do some painting artwork, so that is the thing. So according to Plato, there are three realities. One is the idea. Second one is the actual product. The third one is its painting or its imagination. So, so far we have seen Plato's idea, Socrates' idea and uh, then uh, other people's idea. Then uh, slowly the essay takes a different direction. So, what does Socrates say on art? So, he explains this based on bet. So, there are three kinds of bets. So, earlier what I was telling through the cup. So, first is the idea. So, the idea is uh, coming from God. So, the actual bet made by the carpenter. The bet found in the painting. So, which comes first? Idea comes first. The object comes second. And the painting comes third. So based on this, so he asked a question. How shall we describe the painter of this third bet? Is it real? So for which he gives a conclusion like this. Uh, we may fairly designate him as the imitator of that which the others make. Good, I said. Then you call him who is third in the descent from the nature and imitator. So the question he is trying to answer is who is an imitator? The tragic poet is an imitator and therefore like all other imitators, he is thrice removed from the king and from the truth. So this is to be noted. So a poet, right, a poet is thrice removed from reality. A poet, according to uh, Socrates, according to Socrates, a poet is thrice removed from reality. How? So original idea, for example, some we may say uh, the poet writes something based on nature. So that he tries to imitate nature. So if a poet writes or imitates nature, he is thrice removed from reality. Because who created uh, nature? God. 
so the idea belongs to god so then uh, nature so nature so what do we see so that is the creation that is the reflection of the original idea that was inside god's head so then uh, based on that poetry so poetry comes from the poet so when the poet writes a poetry that is already thrice removed three thrice means three times removed from the reality then uh, he says something about art and lower order so what is that so here uh, ideas ideas so what do we see in our uh, life so that is not real so if you see a table that is not real so that is the imitation right then the ultimate uh, locus that is the central point not only of reality but of value so determination that art is at second remove from the truth automatically so that establishes its equal remoteness from the beautiful and good so whenever there is an art so don't say art comes first so according to aristotle uh, never say art is the original art is the imitation so in this context uh, plato say something for all things including art are ultimately judged by the one criterion of their relation to the same idea so how art will be judged so art will be compared to the original so what do we find in nature based on that a work of art will be judged if the nature is better reflected by the art then that is a good art then uh, M. H. Abraham talks about the status of the poet. So the poet is uh, very closer to, or the poet is the competitor of the artisan. So artisan, other artist like painters. So he is a competitor to lawmaker, the rulers, and the moralist, the priest. So in the society, a poet is the competitor to artist lawmaker and moralist why so here uh, what happens uh, so because uh, the other people call themselves as true air poet because uh, they are uh, doing something good a painter is good a lawmaker is good moralist is good so here uh, one incident takes place in plato's uh, republic uh, some uh, poets uh, come to the place and uh, they seek entry into the city but uh, the other three people the artists and uh, lawmakers and moralists you know they give a epic reply to the poets. So this is the first, uh, let me read, then uh, you, I will uh, explain that. Best of strangers, that is uh, the poets are addressed. So just imagine in Republic, so a few poets uh, seek entry into the Republic, Plato's Republic. But uh, the other three people, artists, lawmakers, uh, and moralist priests, they just uh, reply them. Best of strangers, we also, according to our ability, or tragic poets so here in plato's republic it is said so the lawmakers moralists other artists they say they themselves are tragic poets because their tragedy is the noblest their tragedy is the best and noblest for our whole state is an imitation of the best and noblest life which we affirm to the indeed very true of tragedy so whatever we do for the sake of the country it is truth and tragedy so you are poets and we are poets poet rivals and antagonists in the noblest of dramas but here uh, the people the rulers and the other uh, artists moralists say so we are the true competitor because whatever job done by you that we are also carrying out so you know you seek no entry into republic so like that they are arguing then uh, plato say something about uh, what is an ordinary poetry or bad poetry he says uh, ordinary poetry's effects on its auditors that is the listener or bad so if we listen to bad poetry it will have some effects what are the effects three effects because it represents appearance rather than truth a bad poetry uh, represents only uh, appearance not the truth so it is bad bad poetry nourishes the feelings not the reason bad poetry gives importance to emotions not truth or reason logic then poet in composing 
So when the poet uh, tries to compose poetry, uh, try to write poetry, uh, he will not uh, depend on his knowledge, but he has to wait for a divine inspiration. Please note down. So how bad poetry is born according to Plato. So bad poetry represents uh, only imitation, not the truth. So bad poetry gives uh, nourishes means it uh, breeds. Uh, it gives more importance to feelings, not reason. So bad poetry. So when uh, someone writes bad poetry, he will not use his uh, logic or knowledge. He will be waiting for divine inspiration. Then uh, he questions that. So poetry cannot be separated from truth, justice and virtue. Please note down that according to Plato, poetry should have truth, poetry should have justice and poetry should have virtue. Then uh, Socrates uh, says something. Uh, Socrates, uh, Socrates uh, in uh, Republic, uh, Socrates words are quoted. For great is the issue at stake, greater than appears, whether a man is to be good or bad. So the thing is truth. So poetry should not imitate. It should be the truth. So that is the idea of Plato. So indirect meaning of uh, Plato is poetry cannot be true. Next, uh, Aristotle says something on imitation. Aristotle has written a book, uh, Poetics. Uh, in which he defines poetry as imitation. Poetry means uh, imitation according to uh, Aristotle. Then uh, he gives uh, many, what are the different forms of poetry? So there is uh, epic poetry, right? So during the time of uh, Aristotle, please uh, note down. So there was no drama or poetry difference. Drama means poetry. So he gives uh, epic poetry, then uh, tragedy, uh, comedy, dithyrambic, dithyrambic means uh, short lyric poem, most uh, flute, flow, flute uh, playing and lyre playing, another uh, musical instrument. So everything is the mode of imitation. Please note down, according to Aristotle, all art forms, poetry, drama, everything is nothing but imitation. Then he says that term implies that a work of art is constructed according to prior models in the nature of things. So this is another important factor to be noted. So if you have a work of art, so that work of art has got a previous model. So based on that model only, so the poet writes. So previous prior model means, so the same idea, there is idea belongs to God. So nature is uh, just imitation. So the poet writes based on the imitation only. So everyone has a model. Then Aristotle distinguishes poetry from other kinds of art. So how uh, he differentiates. He says uh, tragedy especially. He gives more importance to tragedy. So tragedy consists of plot, character, thought and so many other aspects. Then uh, he says something about uh, criticism. Aristotle's criticism is not only criticism of art as art, independent of statesmanship and morality, but also of poetry as poetry and of each kind of poem by the criteria appropriate to particular nature. So according to Aristotle, so your poetry should be an imitation, poetry is an imitation. At the same time, it analyzes, Aristotle analyzes poetry based on its genre. He doesn't group a poetry as it is. Then uh, Aristotle's Poetics considers a work of art in various of its external relations. So what are the factors influence a work of art? So he says that this is the important thing to be noted. A tragedy cannot be fully defined. That means your poetry cannot be fully defined. Especially the achievement of uh, uh, tragic pleasure, which is that of pity and fear. Especially when a tragedy is performed, when the tragedy is watched. So that uh, pity and fear cannot be. So tragic pleasure. So what is tragic pleasure? So this is a very beautiful phrase coined by Aristotle. Tragic pleasure means when we watch a drama, tragedy, 
so at that time we get a feeling related to that uh, tragedy so that experience is called tragic pleasure now he comes to the mimetic concept so what does a drama imitate so there is primary so that is the subject matter which it imitates is primary so there is uh, according to aristotle so what is more important in a tragedy the subject matter so if you need some imitation so in a in imitative art subject matter is very very important all other things come later then how does uh, the art starts he traces to the natural human instinct for imitating and to the natural tendency to find pleasure in seeing imitations so this point is to be noted so there is uh, how art was born human beings have the natural instinct of copy like a child uh, imitates the mother and uh, relatives to talk so like that all human beings have the natural tendency to uh, imitate and they find it uh, they find happiness in that so there is we always imitate one thing so which is a complete whole so to conclude uh, this particular point the form of work is derived from the form of the object that is imitated so so in this part we have discussed one single idea that is how does art start what is the genesis of art the genesis of art begins from man's instinct to imitate and his instinct to find pleasure find pleasure in imitating next the idea of uh, tragedy and imitation tragedy imitates what so that question is answered here so tragedy imitates a fable so fable or plot so that is the end and purpose of tragedy its life and soul so to speak and this because tragedy is essentially an imitation of imitation not of persons but of action and life so it is very simple to understand so tragedy is nothing but an imitation of action and life tragedy is not the imitation of parent persons it is just the imitation of action and life then uh, its primary objective is imitation of action and that it is mainly for the sake of the action that it imitates the personal agents so this uh, confusing idea also to be noted so here uh, the objective of uh, tragedy is imitating action imitating action tragedy imitates action so in the so without uh, if you want to convey action we need persons so for conveying action persons also imitated so who is more important action is more important than persons so this is the idea of uh, tragedy and imitation next we have entered into a very complex idea the poetic process according to aristotle so the aspects of poetic process uh, first uh, he distributes something that is uh, what are the other things imitated in uh, tragedy so which is more important that is the emotional effects on an audience a tragedy should make an emotional impact so that is number 1 so number 2 so the internal demand of the product itself for example uh, if you write a drama or if you stage a drama that drama itself demands some, something for example if you stage a comedy then uh, you sh it should uh, create laughter if you stage a tragedy it should uh, create a tragedy so like that so that product itself demands something so that also to be noted then he does not uh, uh, very sure he is not very sure of the function of uh, poet himself see uh, he defines the function of tragedy but he does not define the function of uh, poet himself so what is the role of uh, poet he doesn't answer properly but he says a poet is an agent a poet or a person a dramatist is an agent so what he does so what is the role of uh, what is the role of a poet so what he does you know 
so he observes nature he observes people so after observing so with his skill so poet uh, has the skill right so the poet uh, has the skill so he extracts the form from natural things and imposes it upon an artificial medium so this is to be noted actually we also see other persons we also see other actions uh, in and around us but the specific task of the poet or the dramatist is they observe what is going on around them and they extract from that natural thing they immortalize them in a particular work of art so that is a, so the job of the poet or the job of the dramatist is seeing something real and imitating them and recording them in their work of art so here uh, in a poetics so something is uh, given similar to that the poet is invoked only to explain the historical divergence of comic form serious forms and to be advised of certain gates towards the construction of plot and the choice of diction so in poetics uh, it is said in poetics it is said so a poet is advised to concentrate more on plot and the choice of words the language it is employed so that's it see uh, how it is developed so first uh, we said that so the poet uh, gives uh, should give uh, more importance to the audience uh, emotional effect then uh, the role of the poet yeah, the poet is the agent who observes and records in a work of art then it is uh, according to poetics so the poet should give importance to construction of the plot and the choice of diction in this context uh, plato how does he see plato sees a work of art from the point of view of politics according to him a work of art will give something good to the society if a work of art like poetry or drama is not useful to the people then that should not be allowed inside the country so that is the view of plato plato's republic says that then uh, dear friends so far we have discussed how uh, imitation started so imitation is a natural instinct we find happiness in that so from aristotle plato socrates so so different works like uh, uh, republic so how uh, imitation uh, started and developed so far we have seen that now uh, how imitation is understood in 18th century here after the lesson will be like uh, who said what about uh, imitation so after aristotle many people uh, just uh, try to define imitation uh, further so like especially the critics critics uh, also are expected to see art imitates and the critics also are expected to imitate and earlier aristotle gave more importance to action i hope you remember so there was uh, mention about action and a person uh, which is more important in drama action but now uh, in the 18th century people started giving more importance to the persons so that is the human characters or thought or even in uh, inanimate things so the people were given more importance not the action so based on this uh, what are the other terms found uh, or uh, created for imitation is uh, reflection so probable question reflection representation counterfeiting feigning copy or image see these are the other terms that evolved for imitation or they were used instead of imitation now uh, let's see the ideas of uh, richard hurd richard hurd uh, has written a book called discourse on poetical imitation it was published in the 1751 so he says that all poetry is properly imitation so he simply con concludes that all poetry is uh, properly imitation the noblest and most extensive of the mimetic arts so there are so many imitative arts the noblest art is poetry having all creation for its object and ranging the entire circuit of universal being so of course so you can ignore the uh, these uh, last uh, two line so it is very simple 
so all poetry is properly imitation so it is the uh, chief it is the chief of or noblest art so that is the idea of richard hurt then uh, young call young he has written a book uh, called conjectures on original composition possible question uh, he says that there are two kinds of Im uh, imitations there are two ki kinds of imitation one of nature and another one of authors so there are some books in which nature is imitated as they are there are uh, books there are uh, books so they just uh, give the things from the author's point of view so that's why it said nature of authors the first we call originals if a poet imitate nature so that is called original so whereas uh, the other one is uh, scientific inv investigator so according to Carl Jung, so imitations are two kinds. One is nature and one is of authors. Then uh, Reverend uh, J. Moy, so he is an extremist. So he demands uh, originality in poetry. He says uh, something like that. If you take poetry, there are thousands of variations, distinctions and resemblance. So it cannot be the perfect imitation. He declared that original genius always gives the identical impression it receives. So one side he says it is very difficult to imitate. But at the same time, if someone is a genius, if someone is a very good writer, then that person will reflect nature 100%. So that uh, Reverend J. Moy say a very good writer will reflect 100% of what he sees and what he perceives. Then uh, in 18th century, further people discussed on imitations. So now we have a French critic called uh, Charles Batrix. Charles Batrix in 1747 wrote a book, Bugs as Judas It is in uh, French. And uh, Actually, French critic uh, Charles uh, Batrick's uh, work, uh, it enjoyed its popularity in uh, England as well as Germany. According to him, the rules of art, which are now so numerous, must surely be reducible to one single principle. So, please note down. According to Charles Biotex, the rule of the art should be only one principle. So, what is that? Imitate the true physicist who assemble experiments and then on these found a, a season which reduces them to a principle. So you imitate the physicist. Then he proposes to begin with a clear and distinct idea, a principle simple enough to be grasped instantly and extensive enough to observe all the little detailed rules. So in this process, uh, he will follow the not man, Newton, but uh, Ulysses and Descartes. So possible uh, multiple choice question. So according to Butex, you for poetry and imitation just have one rule. You imitate properly. But uh, he wants to follow the physicist. But uh, he doesn't like, uh, uh, he doesn't want to follow Newton. Whereas he wants to follow the other two, Euclid, and uh, Descartes. So these are the two persons he want to imitate. Then further, Charles Batrix uh, praises Aristotle's poetics. Uh, here uh, he says that uh, it is not of crude everyday reality. The imitation is not the uh, reflection of crude everyday reality, but of lawable nature. So the beautiful side of nature is recorded in art. So from this principle, uh, he says something that uh, to extract one by one the rules of taste, both the general rules for poetry and painting and the detailed rules for the special genres. So according to Charles Batrix, you observe nature, right? So you collect uh, from a physicist. So that is there from the natural world also then one by one you collect from nature. So that is the idea proposed by Charles Batrix. 
then uh, M. H. Abraham say something about uh, deductive and inductive aesthetics. Deductive, so that is from general to particular. Inductive, from particular to general. So he makes a reference to a German book. So German writer called Lessing. And uh, that uh, writer has written a book, uh, Lacoon. So it is in Germanic language, 1766. Then uh, uh, he tries to... Uh, he tries to explain the confusions related to this uh, say. So he says that it's a very beautiful thing, possible question also. According to Lessing, painting is dumb poetry and uh, poetry a dumb speaking painting. Very beautiful idea. Painting is dumb poetry. He says po painting is nothing but poetry, but it will not speak. It doesn't have words. Whereas poetry is yes, speaking painting. So poetry describes something. So that is a speaking painting. So this is the a very beautiful idea given by Lessing. But Lessing is against the individual instance. So he wants to see things as a whole. Then uh, he calls, uh, he calls uh, other, uh, he addresses other German critics like this. We Germans have no lack of systematic books. We have so many books. We are the most expert of any nation in the world at deducing from a few given verbal explanation and in the most beautiful order. Anything, whatever that we wish. So according to Lessing, German writers right, and German critics are the best people because they know what to do. So they are good at following detective method. But uh, Lessing has another intention also, that is to establish aesthetic principles by an inductive logic which is deliberately opposed to the procedure of Batrix. So, according to Lessing, all Germans are good at deductive method. Deductive method of writing poetry and understanding poetry. But according to him, that he is good at inductive, that is from specific to general. Now, uh, Lessing has two things to say. One is poetry, like painting, is imagination, sorry, imitation. So, according to Lessing, poetry and painting are just imitation. But uh, their uh, medium is different. So, painting is done by uh, uh, paint uh, brush and poetry is done by words. Their uh, medium may be different, but they convey the same thing. Then his uh, formula is, uh, Nashkam is still for the poet, the attribute which constitutes the essence of his art. So you need not get confused. So this particular word, so this particular word is a Germanic word which means imitation. So what is more important for an art? Just imitation. Especially for poetry, what is more important? Imitation. Now, uh, what are the views of the English critics? So, sometimes the English critics, they differ with Aristotle, but uh, mostly they accept the views of Aristotle and uh, Plato regarding imitation. James Harris, so the first writer in discussion is James Harris. He has written a book called A Discourse on Music, Painting and Poetry in 1744 in which he says like this, imitation was common to all three arts. So they agree by being all mimetic or imitative, they differ as they imitate by different media. So he says that, so there is music, painting and poetry are same, all are imitative arts according to James Harris' possible question. Then came sir, in 1762, he said something like this, of all the fine arts, painting only and sculpture are their native imi nature imitative. So James says three, music, painting and poetry are imitative. But Keynes has a different idea that is painting and sculpture are imitative by nature. Right? Painting or sculpture are uh, imitative. Music uh, and architecture is uh, productive of 
is a protective of uh, originals please note down and copies not from nature language copies from nature only in those instances when there is a imitative of sound or motion so kames uh, idea is very important according to kames painting and sculpture are imitative music and uh, art architecture are productive they are original whereas uh, literature there is language language copies from nature but it copies only the sound and motion sound or motion so these are the two critics views on imitation the next critic uh, that we have is thomas twining he says uh, something uh, uh, very significant that is uh, uh, he says something between copy and object so the words uh, come here copy and object so both imitate and obvious copy and object so both are imitating so that is the idea given so now we have uh, dramatic uh, poetry dramatic poetry uh, which we mimic speech in uh, dramatic poetry we just speak but uh, that is nothing but the imitation so music must be struck from the list of imitative arts so according to thomas uh, twining music is not an imitative art but all other things painting sculpture uh, poetry everything are imitative art especially in the last uh, few things so each writer says something about imitation some people include music some people exclude music dear friends finally so let's see the view of post renaissance critics so post renaissance critics calls aristotle's poetics as very deceptive deceptive means uh, false uh, misleading something not true so so there is the assessment of uh, post renaissance critics regarding uh, imitation so now uh, in the modern time so the focus of interest is shifted so earlier uh, at the beginning uh, we had the diagram you know so there is uh, in the diagram we had uh, work right then uh, there we had uh, universe right then we had artists then we had audience so the with this uh, audience so first work and artist were there so the artist focused on the universe so now the focus from universe it uh, goes towards the audience so in the now in the modern time the focus of a literary art so its imitation has been shifted from universe to universe to audience so the best example of uh, the best example of uh, this type of criticism is apology for poetry by philip sidney so now uh, the focus of imitative art the focus of criticism also has changed uh, dear friends i hope uh, you have uh, understood uh, something about uh, mimetic theory so mimetic theory means uh, just it is the imitation from nature so is it a primary imitation secondary imitation or a third uh, thrice removed uh, imitation so all these aspects we have discussed so dear friends so in elite english academy all uh, topics are discussed in detail like this so if you wish to join us feel free to call us so because since we prepare the lessons based on the textbook then you need not worry about a second uh, preparation on your own of course if you happen to read the original text so that is uh, well and good at the same time if you need help feel free to call us we are there to help you thank you all the very best